By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are bringing you magic from the Frost Giant Cup in the Netherlands Hilversum. This was a tournament that was held not too long ago. And um, here we're looking at a round one matchup. And we're looking at, I believe, a legendary Eureka deck taking on a counter burn deck that is also playing white. So it's not just splashing white, but it's playing with quite a lot of white cards. Now, before we're going to the matches, I would just quickly like to go through a few key cards in both decks. I do not have a deck picture, but I do know a little bit about the decks and, and I can share a little bit about the tactic of both of these decks uh, with you before we go to the games. If you like to go directly to the games themselves, there is a timestamp in the description below and it'll take you directly to the games. Now, the first deck that I would like to talk about is the legendary Eureka deck. And here we have the Eureka card on the screen. Now, Eureka is a sorcery from Legends Green, and it means that both players may take any permanence in their hand and put it directly into play. And they can keep doing this until both players um, are saying, okay, I do no longer want to play out a card. So when both players have to stop, so not just one player, but both players. And this means that Eureka is ideal to play in a deck with a lot of creatures that are difficult to cast. So big fat creatures with a high casting cost. And the reason this deck is called a legendary uh, Eureka deck is because uh, Bjorn is playing with a lot of legendary creatures. And this is one of them that he's playing in this deck, Bartle Rune Axe. And it's a pretty a big boy. And as you can see, it has a high casting cost, but because of Eureka, that doesn't really matter. And uh, this creature actually is one of the four or five creatures in old school that you do not have to tap when you attack. The most famous one being the Sarah Angel, of course. Now, another uh, legendary creature that I know that he's playing with, um, and I have to look up the name here. Let's see if I can uh, get it on the screen. I do know, I think he's also playing with Nico Bolas, by the way. Not sure, but um, the other creature that he's uh, playing with is uh, here we have the Riven Turnbull, and this is a 5-5, five five, I believe. And as you can see, it has an insane casting cost as well. You're playing seven, paying seven mana for a 5-5 five five creature, but still, it's a pretty big, beefy creature and easy to cast because of that Eureka. So knowing Bjorn, you probably have other tactics as well than just a Eureka plan, but I do believe that Eureka is his main plan of action. Now let's look at his opponent. So his opponent is sitting on the right playing a counter burn deck. And that means that you're going to see the usual suspects, of course, Surrender Befried, um, counter spells, but also Psionic Blasts, um, Lightning Bolts, like uh, the one you see here. So he has a lot of direct damage and a lot of cheap creatures, probably also playing Flying Man and adding white, as I said before. And that means that he's playing with Disenchants, Swords to Plowseers, and probably a balance. I'm not sure if he plays a balance, but I do expect him to. Uh, it's such a powerful card in old school magic. And um, let's see, he is also playing, by the way, with Sarah Angels, and I thought that was quite interesting. So the white component in his deck is, is very relevant. It's not just a splash of a few disenchants. It's really a big chunk of his deck. And I believe he's playing with two Sarah Angels in this deck. Um, so I'm curious to see uh, if we're going to see those creatures on the board as well. When I'm looking at these two decks playing against each other, I, I would say that the counter burn deck is a slight favorite because of the fact that um, it has direct damage and it has very cheap creature spells. So I'm seeing a lot of early pressure and if the Eureka player cannot find Eureka on time, he's, he's probably going to die very quickly. But if he can find his Eureka spells, then it can get a very, it can become a very interesting matchup. That's what I know about the decks. Now let's quickly go to game number one. Game number one here at the Frost Giant Cup here in Hilversum, the Netherlands. Look at that opening here from the Counter Burn player, cracking that Lotus. Tapping the Ruby and the Volcanic Island. Oh, there's a lot of glare on the cards. Hopefully that'll go away at a certain point here in the game. But I can tell you that he cast a Sarah Angel. So it's a turn one Sarah Angel. And the player on the left is playing with the Eureka deck. And already it's not looking good here for the Eureka player. Playing a Taiga and passing turn. 
and drawing a card here. At least he only has three cards now. <laughs> look, at this, look at that. Play an Ancestral Recall. Okay, he's going to draw three new cards. So that means he has five cards on hand. A Sarah Angel on the battlefield. Playing a Plateau here. And that means that the Eureka player is going to 16. Playing here a Felwar Stone. Probably has more plans than just the Eureka plan. Probably has some ramp in there as well and some other ideas for the deck. And that's always important when you're creating a deck um, around a certain card that you'll have more ways than one. If you want to make the deck at least a little bit competitive. And here Buren is on 12, taking another hit from the Sarah Angel, playing a Bayou, playing a Black Lotus of his own. And I'm expecting a big creature here. And there is a Mahamoti Jin. And I'm liking this. I'm liking seeing these big creatures. But there is a quick Swords to Plows here. And that, of course, is that white edition in this counter burn deck. And white simply has the best removal in old school with Disenchants and Swords to Plows here. And there's a Tundra and another attack. And there's another Sarah Angel. So two Sarahs on the board. I believe they're beta Sarahs. Beautiful decks, by the way. And look at those beta dual lands. Very nice. And let's see. I mean, Bjorn is not giving up yet. I mean, he is on 13. I like this play, playing a time twister. And why not? So both players shuffling their decks and, and their graveyard is going in the deck as well. And interesting here to note is that the Mahamoti Jin uh, that got removed from the game by the Sword Supplies here is not shuffled back in because it got removed. It didn't go to the graveyard. And that's always another nice bonus that the Sword Supplies here uh, has over other creature removal. As if it isn't good enough already. And let's see. Of course. <laughs> this is. This is just crazy. The things that the counter burn player is drawing in this first game, it's magnificent. Uh, now finding a library of Alexandria, and I believe he has seven in hand after that draw, so he can just draw an extra one. Dealing eight damage here with the Sarah Angel. But okay, he's playing a Psy Blast and a Lightning Bolt, and that's game. And to be honest, this first game never was much of a game after that opening and that Ancestral Recall follow up by the counter burn player. So that means it's 1-0 and both players are going to the sideboards and we'll get back to them when they're starting game number two. Game number two is about to start and um, the Eureka player gets to start. I already see a Library of Alexander there in his hand and a Eureka. So that's a much better start for the Eureka player than that first game. But look at that. There is a strip mine taking care of that Library of Alexandria. So... Will the counter burn player go insane again? Playing a flying man here on turn one. Again, that glare. And playing a tropical island. And wow, this is nice. So now it's the Eureka's player who's finding that early ancestral recall, filling that hand, and of course, playing the Felwar Stone for some early ramp. And the ramping goes really well with all the fat creatures. And there's one damage. And there's the surrender of free. That's kind of what you expect from a counter burn deck. Flying Man, Surrender Befreed, and some direct damage in between. That we haven't seen yet, by the way. And, and let's see if the Eureka player can now cast Eureka. <laughs> and yes, he can. I'm liking this. So there's Eureka now. And he's going to start playing first a Plateau, Passing Turn, Volcanic, and Strip Mine. And a Plateau. Oh, this is nice. Playing Bartle. And this is the creature we talked about. So... When he attacks, you don't have to tap him. Playing a Mahamoti Jin. And this is kind of what I was hoping for when I was discussing this matchup. Seeing this crazy Eureka shenanigans. And look at this. And the Demonic Tutor. Oh, that's insane. And he doesn't really need Eureka anymore. He now has 6 mana. So he can just now pick up a Fatty and play it out. I wonder what choice he's going to make. Because he doesn't have a mana anymore to play a crossroads. If, if he could find a concordant crossroads and find a way to play that card out, he can attack straight away. And I think that's kind of the dream, uh, playing a Eureka uh, and also a concordant crossroads. 
And uh, the counter burn player actually taking a damage from the Ifrit, uh, deciding to attack. So this is quite interesting. So that means he probably has a lightning bolt. And that's why he's just deciding to... Okay, this is interesting. That went very fast playing a uh, fireball, I believe, actually, to get rid of the Mahamoti Jin. Went very quick, but he decided to block the flying man, taking three damage, and then... Um, the counter burn player played a fireball. Let's see what the Eureka player can cast now for four. Playing control magic and wow. And I wonder if that's the card uh, that he looked up. So maybe Bjorn, if you're watching this, maybe you can uh, tell me uh, what you used your demonic tutor for, because I'm curious now. And tapping his lance, taking a damage, of course, from the Ifrit. And using a strip mine on his only blocker, and that's that factory. And now the counter burn player is on four, so that probably means we're going to a one one here, playing a flying man. At least that's at least buying him a turn and attacking here. So having the chum block Bartle. So there goes the flying man taking a time walk, and that's a pretty traditional way of. Uh, ending a game, a time walk, and having the extra combat step. So that means it's 1-1. One, one. So we're going to a third game. Game number three. So it's 1-1, one, one, the decisive game here. And the counter burn player gets to start, which is a big advantage when you're playing such a quick deck. And let's see if Bjorn wants to keep or... I'm looking at his hand again. What do we see there? I believe I do see a Eureka in the opening hand playing a... <laughs> exactly, I thought, hey, is he going to start? But anyway, the counter burn player here with the flying man turn one. And look at that, he's flying that Loa. I believe he top deck that, that, that card. So that's extremely lucky. And this time the counter burn player doesn't have a strip mine as a response. Does have a chaos orb though, so we're probably going to see a flip. That's always entertaining. And let's see if he's going to flip. First, he's going to attack. I guess that's the easy decision here. And then decides to crack the Lotus. Interesting, is not going to crack yet. And playing that Sarah Angel. Really want to win the tempo game here. Which is absolutely possible when you are playing a counter burn deck. Because that can go extremely quick. And he only needs to put in a couple of points of damage with uh, with his creatures because he has Psy Blasts, he has Lightning Bolts, and I believe he also plays with Chain Lightning, so he has enough direct damage. Um, you know, the direct damage can do the rest. He doesn't have to win with creature damage here. And we see the Eureka player now really thinking, uh, kind of in the tank here, because of that Sylvan Library, he can look at the first three cards and can, he can pay four life per card that he wants to draw extra. And look at that, he's drawing an extra card. So he's already going to 14. Very risky. So he's probably going to make a play here, maybe even playing a Eureka, but then he'll need a Mox or a Lotus or something to get that mana number four. Look at that, there's the Soul Ring, but he doesn't have a green source. Tapping three here. Interesting, playing a Mind Twist. I didn't see that coming, to be honest. Um, that means that two of his cards are gone. It went very quickly, but I think I saw a Disenchant and a Lightning Bolt. And that's pretty good news because a Disenchant could have been played out on the Sylvan. But, I mean, he is on 9, and the Counter Burn player just keeps on pressing, obviously. And I believe he just has decided now, okay, I'm not going to win the card advantage game here. So I'm just going to let the Loa be the Loa. And with the Loa, I mean Library of Alexandria. And he's probably just deciding to rather use the Chaos Orb for a big creature threat and hoping that that is enough to keep the combat damage from the Sarah Angel and the Flying Man uh, going. And look at that, playing a Felwer Stone, having three land now available. And there's the Black Lotus. He's cracking it, tapping the Plateau. And, ooh, interesting. I wanted to say playing a Eureka, but there's no Eureka. He's actually taking over the Sarah Angel. I always love to play Control Magic on a Sarah because they never get in there tapped. Oh, and that's a miss flip. Oh, that went really fast, but that was a miss flip. Oh, man. Oh, and that's that's what happens. And 
to have a misflip in a decisive game here. That's, maybe that's even going to cost him the game because the Eureka player was only on nine and having like an extra turn here to um, to attack with the Sarah bring in an extra five damage because now he can also not attack with the Flying Man. He does though probably have having a, a Lightning Bolt. And this is interesting because the Eureka player can say, I'm going to... Yeah, so he's probably choosing to block and thinking, okay, worst case scenario, he's going to destroy my Sarah Angel, but then at least I don't um, have the risk of my opponent playing a Disenchant later in the game on a Control Magic and getting back his Sarah Angel. So in this way, he's actually losing and his Sarah and a Lightning Bolt and his Flying Man. So it's not too bad here for just one Control Magic. And then if you take into account that he's also wasted his Chaos Orb, orb you know, miss flipping there, Oh, and this is cool. This is fantastic. This is actually Torsten von Ursus. Ursus, Ursus. How do I pronounce these names? But it's it's a beautiful card, beautiful art by Mark Poole. It's a 5-5 creature with no abilities. It's a vanilla. Isn't that cool? And is he actually going to do some combat damage with Torsten? And he is. Bam! Oh, I'm really liking this deck. Torsten dealing 5 damage here. And don't get me wrong, I also enjoy looking at the counter burn deck with that white splash. It's very interesting and very powerful. But um, obviously seeing these cool legendary creatures uh, coming into play, uh, you don't see that very often. So it's really nice to look at. And let's see what he's going to do next. He now has tons of mana. He has tons of cards. And the counter burn player only has one card in hand after that mind twist. And what if he hadn't missed that flip? Then the whole game would have been different. And I know what it feels like because I've missed flips as well, especially on tournaments. And playing a Volcanic Island here. Tapping. Wow, that's cool. Nico Bolas. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, he's countering it. Oh, man. I understand that he counters it playing a, uh, a mana drain. So that means he's, he gets tons of extra mana. And playing a Surrender Befreed. At least having a block or maybe a double block with his factory. And he can actually uh, kill the, uh, the Torsten. Oh, wow. This is a very entertaining match so far. Uh, attacking, not blocking, he's going to 10 and playing a red elemental blast, a card from the sideboard here against that Surrender Befreed. Oh, and playing another one. I believe this is a 4, is it a 4 7 or is it the other card? It is a vanilla creature um, and um, that's game. Wow. And that means that the uh, Eureka deck is winning here in round number one, 2 to 1. And this has been a very entertaining first round. Unfortunately, we had some glare, so I'm gonna to try to fix that. And if you'd like to see uh, more action from the Frost Giant Cup for, uh, that was played in Hilversum, the Netherlands, please keep an eye on the channel because I will be posting more games. Uh, I also have the finals of this tournament. So keep an eye on the channel to see coverage of the entire tournament. For now, thank you for watching Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to see more old school magic, you can click on the videos that are appearing right now on the screen. And if you wanna help me grow the channel, please subscribe, spread the word, and let me know what you think of these old school magic games. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>